Good morning. All right. So thanks a lot for coming, you guys. Um, this little card's going to be really quite quick, I think. Um, it's just uh, uh, done on the um, Strathmore um, watercolor cards. You've got to make sure you get the watercolor cards and not the creative cards. And um, I'm going to tape mine down. Now, there's two reasons I want to tape it down. And uh, that's because I don't want it to wrinkle at all when I'm working on it. And I'm just using regular tape here. And I'm going to put the tape half on and half off. So this is going to keep it from wrinkling, but it's also going to give me a nice border. I don't normally, um, I'm not a big fan of the Strathmore cards, but in this particular case, it's going to work really well because um, the paint lifts off of it more easily than it would if I were painting on, say, arches or something like that. So when you tape it down, don't forget to tape the, um, the crease in the card as well at the top. And basically, I'm just eyeballing where I'm putting this, but it's half on and half off. So the tape's all the way around now. I'm just going to make sure that it's... And just a few more minutes before I started, yeah, I'm going to move that right now. There we go. Better? So this, uh, this tape's going to give me a border, and I'm just eyeballing where I'm putting it. So just before I started, what I did was I added several drops of water to my palette uh, so that my, my paint is really um, creamy again, as if it were out of the tube. And if you, don't, um, if you don't have creamy paint, you won't get the dark sky that you want. So... Um, what we're going to be using is, I'm going to use a yellow, it could be any yellow, um, a green, I might use some pink, and a very, very dark blue, whatever you have. Like it could be, um, I'm using going to use some indigo, uh, but you could use um, Payne's Gray or something like that as well, would work. I've got two water buckets, I've got some paper towel, I've got the scotch tape, as I said. And um, I've got a few brushes here. I'm going to use a fan brush. I like to use that for my spattering when I do my stars. I've got a small brush for my details. I've got a round brush and um, I've got a one inch flat brush. And first thing I need to do is wet the whole area. So I'm going to move this. Actually, before I do that, I think I'm going to protect the back part of the card from getting splashed or paint on it. So I'm just going to tape a piece of um, paper towel down here. All right, so, and then I can move that up a bit. All right, so I'm going to take some clean water in my, my flat brush and I'm going to just wet the whole card. If I didn't have this taped down, boy, the, boy, would this ever wrinkle. So, And I'm sort of leaning to one side to make sure that I can see everywhere on the card. I can see the shine so that I don't miss any spots. I don't want puddles, but I, I want to make sure that it's well covered. If you have enough water on there, it'll buy you a little bit of time. All right, so this is easy because um, with northern lights, they're constantly changing. You really can't go wrong here. So I've got two options here. I've got um, one that's sort of sweeping across the sky and reflected in the lake. And then I've got this one here where they're sort of dancing and they're going in every direction. So it's entirely up to you, whichever you want to do. You can sort of plan it out. I think in both of those cases, I just kind of winged it. 
<coughs> but maybe I'll show both versions. So I'm going to start maybe with some yellow. And I'm just going to find a place to put it. Um, how's that? Don't have to be too careful about it. I'm just going to go with some green now. And I put the green between the what the yellow um, so that there's a difference in color there. And I want to make sure if I'm adding p any pink that I'm not or you know pink that I'm not going to um, put it on top of my green because uh, pink and green don't go so good on top of each other, but they're very nice beside each other. So I'm going to put some pinks in here, and they look really bright right now, but they will. Um, they will dry a fair bit lighter than what you're looking at right now. Um, now I'm not even going to wait, I'm just going to go right into this really, really dark blue. And so for the dark blue, I think I might even add a, a little bit more. Um, this is like a cobalt blue that you can add to it. And I, just to make it a little bit more blue instead of so dark. But what you want here in this sky is lots and lots of pigment, because this is the sort of thing you don't want to do more than one time. How do you know what is enough water? Um, when it's not, uh, when it's very shiny, but there are no puddles. When it's um, after a minute or so that it's not all uh, evaporated. Okay, so um, I'm going to come in and I'm just going to put some sky areas in here. These ones are obviously going to be sort of sweeping this way. But I want to make sure that this color, this blue that I'm using right here, it's really uh, well saturated with color. You want to make sure this is dark enough. Right now, everything on here is nice and wet. <laughs> you can see it's pretty messy, which is okay. Because it'll work out in the end. All right. There we go. So, um, good thing I have my paper towels there. I'm going to take some other paper towel. And I'm going to wipe off all this tape because any of this tape, anything on the tape, I should say, the, the paint that's there, it's going to take longer to dry than what's on the paper. And then if any of that happens to get back onto the paper, then it's going to make a blossom. So I'm just going to wipe this off. All right, so what I'll do next, I think, is um, show you another version while this one's drying. So if you want to plan it so that you have, um, I have another one ready here. If you want to plan it so that you have another one um, where it's going to have some water, we'll want to do a reflection. So I'm, in this case, I'm going to kind of plan um, the, uh, I think I'm going to make the, I'm going to make the uh, horizon about here. Um, one thing I should mention to you, which I didn't at the start, was that you want to make sure that your card will be um, opening the correct way. So if I were to do, for example, a vertical card, if I did it this way, it would be on the back of the card. So I'd have to turn it so that I'm working on the right-hand side. All right, so um, sometimes the camera doesn't like white. It has a hard time focusing, so I'll try and uh, get some color on here quick. Clean water. 
I think what I'll do is I'll put this water on and I'll actually show it to you in the light so that you can see the amount of glare or shine I should say on the paper you almost want to put as much on there as it can it's as much as it can hold okay so if I hold this up in the light I don't know how, how you can see that or not but You'll see that it's it's pretty shiny all over, but there aren't any puddles, except on the tape. I'll grab the tape and wipe that off. So um, I just do the same thing with the colors, but I just have to remember that if I have a streak coming down this way, it's going to reflect this way in the water. So it's almost like an ink blot. I will start with some yellows. If I have something like that, I would need to have my reflection mirror that. Same with my greens. I have a little less um, space to put the whole thing in there because uh, the horizon's lower, but Okay, and then I come in with my real darks again I really like when they bleed and run like that. It uh, makes them look even better. So I'm gonna. Lots of color down there. Um, all right, so you can see that that's, that's giving me kind of a mirror image. And I'm going to go back to my original one. It's not dry, but I want to try and um, create some streaks in here. So I'm going to set the other one aside, come back to my first one. And this is where I'm going to take my um, wide um, shader brush and I'm going to dip it in my clean water and then I will blot it. So I'm going to put it in my water and I'm going to blot it once so that it becomes a thirsty brush. It'll lift up color instead of putting it down. And if I hold my brush in a spot for any length of time, it will absorb more of the water or more of the paint that's already on the surface. So I can create this sort of effect and then I'm going to pull up into the sky and I will repeat that. I'll rinse and blot my brush and the slower I go the, the more it will streak. So I'm actually just sort of taking the color that's already on the surface and I'm dragging it along. Um, I like how they kind of go random, so I'm going to sweep this one. And I streak it a little bit more just by pulling the paint that's already on the surface.
And that's with this Strathmore cards. They, uh, the paint lifts off a lot more easily than it would if it were on arches. So normally I don't like that effect, but in this case it works quite well. And you can just play with this and, and make it as streaky and so on that you like. You could take just one of the colors and pull it up. You want anything, it's entirely up to you. You get to do whatever you want. So wipe off my edges. And when that's all dry, then I can come in and I can uh, create my scenery, which is going to be pretty much just silhouette. Set that one aside. I'll come back to my reflection one. I can do lots at one time. Okay, so again, clean brush, blot it till it's thirsty, and drag it up into your sky. Rinse, blot, and pull. I want to do the same in the water. When it's totally dry, you can't lift as well. It will, this step where you're lifting is easier done when it's a little bit damp. When the paint is not 100% dry. You can lift color off of dry, a dried watercolor, but it's not going to give that streaking that I'm after here. Um, I think I'm just going to do a little bit here too. That's pretty. And I'll do the same for the reflection. Okay. So that's giving me a really nice sweeping effect. Wipe off these edges. I forgot the other important ingredient, and that's coffee. <laughs> Which is getting cold. All right, so I've got that all wiped off. Then um, here are the two that I've done. And I've got both of these uh, taped to a board uh, that doesn't have to be the most sturdy board in the world. I mean, the cards aren't like a full sheet of watercolor paper or anything like that. Um, but both, both are really nice effects. And then, um, and then it's entirely up to you what kind of scenery you do. You just have to do your scenery in um, a silhouette. This is the one with the lake. So I did a, um, a distant island and then one here with some jack pines and things because of course you want to make sure that uh, your trees and your setting are um, relate to the northern lights. You wouldn't have a palm tree of course. But um, that's a little bit damp yet to be um, adding that on but maybe I can blow dry this if I can mute so that it doesn't hurt your ears. Okay, so I'll uh, see if I can mute this.
I hope that mute worked. Um, okay, so um, at this point, we just take our small brush. Actually, before we do that, before we do any of our um, landscape, you can hear me again, right? Can you hear me? I hope. Okay, thanks. So at this point, now I want to add my stars. So I'm going to take my palettes out of the way. And because this is going to spatter a little bit and make a bit of a mess. But um, I'm going to use a, a this is PH Martin's Bleed Proof White. I can get the lid off. <laughs> One sec. Just had to run it under some water to get the uh, lid off. Okay, now my favorite way of spattering is using a fan brush. So I'm going to take my fan brush and dip it in. This is quite um, fluid. And then I will tap it with another brush to give me my stars. This does spatter around a little bit, but I find that this is much less messy than the, the toothbrush method. Okay, so I've got that one done. I'll do my other. My brush, by the way, was a little bit damp when I started, when I dipped it in here. This is um, PH Martin's Bleed Proof White that I'm using, but you could use gouache. Uh, some people even like to use uh, acrylic, although I'm not a big fan of using acrylic on your watercolor. Lots of stars in this sky. <laughs> okay. So that's got that done. And we'll just go back to our first one here. And then we can create whatever kind of um, scene that we want. Acrylic fluid white, possibly. Um, I haven't actually used that one. Um, Chinese white would work. I like the bleed proof white the best because um, uh, because it's very opaque and it and the color from underneath doesn't um, come through. So as for the metallics, I don't know that that would um, be my choice, but of course it's your artwork and you it might be a nice effect, so I would give it a try. Um, this it might even be nice though with the Northern Lights to, to put in some iridescent color. Uh, the iridescence can be uh, kind of a nice effect too. Alright, so let's get my palette back here. And I'm going to go into my my blue here. I might even add a little bit of Payne's Gray to it to make it just a little bit darker. 
I'm not a fan of black, but you could even add black. But it should be very, very pigmented. Because you don't want to have to do this kind of thing twice, especially if you're doing trees and things. So, um, so I could do a, some land here. Maybe some um, distant hills, which I'll do maybe a little bit lighter. And we got two hills there, and put some trees on here. I could do. And maybe a nice big jack pine here. Because it's a silhouette, it's a lot easier to do because you don't have to worry about your highlights and shadows and all of that sort of thing. It's quite dramatic having the, the silhouette. You could actually mask the stars before. Um, you would mask them uh, by spattering your masking fluid on instead. That's certainly an option. Okay, so there's a nice little jack pine, maybe some grasses or something. Maybe even some in the distance here. We'll do some. Perhaps a deciduous tree. It's entirely up to you. It's your piece. You get to do whatever you like. You can make them all different, but have the same theme. And you can do it pretty quickly, especially if you're working on a couple of them at the same time. A stream on painting trees? Uh, yeah, I could do that. Sure. If you're not sure how to paint, say, a jack pine or something like that, um, just I would Google um, clip art because clip art gives you the, the nice silhouettes and uh, you can usually get a pretty good idea there. Anyway, I think that looks pretty nice just the way it is. So I'm going to wipe off the edges. Don't want any of that coming back on. Right, and I will do my other scene, my lake. This one, I, it dried a little bit lighter, but I think that's going to be kind of a nice effect anyway. Now my, my lake will have to go, or my um, land, my island or whatever, it's going to have to go between here and here obviously. Now if you left just that, it it might look like a, an island, but I think you almost need to have another island or a land mass in front to really get a true effect. Maybe another one back here. Do a deciduous tree 
instead my sister-in-law lives up in um, Yellowknife sends all kinds of pictures of these beautiful northern lights I've only had the opportunity of seeing them once myself we were um, camping up north sitting around a campfire and uh, by the lake listening to the loons and it was like postcard like it was just wonderful seeing them Okay, so we've got, here's the two that I've done. Let's see. And that should just about do it. I want to make sure I don't have any stars on my islands, so I'm going to cover that again. There we go. So that about does it, wraps it up. Let me move this down a little bit so you can see. And uh, I think this one I'll take the tape off and everything and so you can see it with how it ends up. I got white spattered all over my thumb. You see the nice white border it leaves. wait a little longer till it's completely dry but I just want to get to show you so you can see this and there are my two cards not quite dry yet but there's our two scenes and I think they look pretty pretty nice they look pretty convincing as northern lights so thanks very much glad you were uh, able to find a little time on your Sunday morning thank you and um, if I have any other um, streams, uh, live streams for um, trees or cards, other cards or anything small like that, um, I'll be sure and let you know as long as you subscribe. So thanks so much. I guess I'm signing off now and we'll see you next time. Bye.